Company for Palestinian Statehood is a very close bond between Washington and Jerusalem. That's that's the simple reality, and I wish he would uh, well, go I mean, some distance toward well, recognizing Let me say the following. Let me say the following. This close bond between the United States and Israel has, over the last few decades, brought us a large number of large-scale wars and invasions. And in my own lifetime, Israel has attacked, with U.S. support, Tunisia, Sudan, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, and Iraq. And in 1973, it downed the Libyan civilian airliners. This is not counting all the Palestinians and Arabs that Israel managed to kill all around the world without a word of disapproval from the United States, including in early 1970s a Moroccan waiter because he simply merely dared to resemble a Palestinian leader. As far as the progress of the peace process he mentioned, let the, let's tick them off one after the other. The Sinai Desert was not really restored to Egypt because it has no sovereignty whatsoever. Plus, he left out a small footnote. The peace agreement between Egypt and Israel requires A, a continued U.S. support for the Egyptian dictatorship, and B, the preservation at all costs of a militant, oppressive dictatorship in Egypt because the Egyptian people, left to their own devices, do not want any peace with the aggressive state that is Israel. Well, Second, let's go to Jeffrey Aronson in Washington, D.C. at this particular point uh, to pick up on that uh, uh, point of debate that is going on at the moment. Does Israel need special protection is the question. Well, I think it's an important point because as we look forward, one of the main issues uh, that Israel wants to get settled is an understanding with Washington on what Israel's legitimate security interests are. And I think there were two important uh, developments on this score in the last week. One is uh, that President Obama publicly, uh, and perhaps more explicitly than any other of his predecessors, endorsed uh, Israel's retention of its nuclear uh, deterrent and its new nuclear capacity, nuclear weapons capa capacity, I, I mean. The, the second point is there were discussions between the Israeli Prime Minister and the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Gates, on uh, Israeli security requirements on what's called its eastern front, that is, east of the Jordan ri River, in the context and in the aftermath of the uh, expected uh, U.S. withdrawal from Iraq uh, and the developments on the Iranian front. As the Americans uh, seek to chart their way diplomatically here in the next few months uh, and to uh, achieve uh, a solution to the problem, which President Obama has still declared to be a vital national interest of the United States, this will require, as, as the previous guests have suggested, uh, an American-Israeli understanding on Israel's security requirements. The main question, however, is what does the U.S. believe Israel's legitimate security requirements to be? And in what manner can these be reconciled with the sovereign powers of a Palestinian state, an end to Israeli occupation, and the evacuation of settlements? On the one hand, Obama has declared support for Israel's nuclear capacity. Uh, again, th this is an important sort of strategic framework in which subsequent discussions will take place. I just want to but interrupt you here at this particular point, sure. Jeffrey, and pick up on that issue of Israel's nuclear program. The U.S. has maintained what some would describe as an ambivalence on this issue. In May this year, a U.N. conference issued a statement endorsed by the U.S. urging Israel to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, or the NPT. It said, and I quote, the conference calls upon India, Israel, and Pakistan to accede to the treaty as non-nuclear weapon states promptly and without conditions. Two days later, though, the White House issued a statement saying the U.S. welcomed the agreement but added a new caveat. It said, we strongly oppose efforts to single out Israel and will oppose actions that jeopardize Israel's national security. And in this week's meeting, Obama reiterated the U.S. stance on the issue and blatantly linked the issue of Israel's security with a special right to nuclear capability. Uh, we strongly believe that uh, given its size, uh, its history, the region that it's in, uh, and the threats that are leveled against us, uh, uh, against it, that uh, Israel has unique security requirements. 
Well, to help sort through the U.S. approach to all this, here's what Avner Cohen, an expert at the James Martin Center for Non-Proliferation Studies, had to say. If you listen carefully to what Barack Obama said this afternoon, actually, without using even at one time the word nuclear weapons, he said that the United States, for the time being, support, endorse, even blessed Israel unique possession of nuclear weapon under the so-called cover of opacity. Essentially what the president says is we are going to continue to look the other way around on the Israeli case because in our view, in American view, Israel is a good nuclear custodian and a very responsible nuclear weapon state in its own way. Well, Brett Stevens in New York, um, do you perceive any ambivalence in President Obama's stance on Israel's nuclear capability? Uh, well, uh, less so, as, as you put it, less so by, by the day and by the week. The uh, decision by the U.S. to uh, endorse that NPT resolution came as um, a surprise to the Israelis. It was a break with past... Um, uh, past uh, U.S. Uh, practice of, of uh, tacitly endorsing Israel's nuclear capability. This goes back all the way to understandings uh, from, from, the, uh, uh, from the early 1970s. I think the administration, I think, realizes that it, it may have blundered very badly uh, with, uh, with respect to that vote because, again, it's very difficult from an Israeli point of view, and I'm, uh, I suspect my colleague in Beirut will take a, a, a different view, but it's very difficult from an Israeli point of view to contemplate any kinds of territorial withdrawals without the assurance that it has a, uh, the proverbial bomb in the basement as an ultimate security guarantee. Without that bomb in the basement, it would be hard for Israel to withdraw, uh, uh, certainly from, from the West Bank. It would have been hard to contemplate even the withdrawal from the Sinai 30 years ago. Well, let's take the view of Assad Abu Khalil well, in I mean, Beirut. I mean, I, I, must say, I mean, I must say that the previous guest provided us with a moment of comedy here. I mean, he's basically suggesting that there's a criminal in a neighborhood who has been lambasting and terrorizing the entire neighborhood, and if he's threatening with a gun, that he has the right, before he surrenders his revolver, to keep a bomb just in case so that he'll be able to annihilate the entire neighborhood. So he basically believes that Israel should have the right to annihilate and ex basically exterminate its enemies in order to have security assurances. And I must say I'm disturbed by the two previous guests because they keep referring to legitimate Israeli security needs as if there is one side that requires security assurances and the other side requires statehood, but not security needs. I mean, there is more than a tinge of racism.